In this episode of Mind Pump, we answer fitness and health questions. But before we do that, we have our introductory conversation where we talk about current events. We bring up fitness and health studies. Uh, and we talk about our lives. We have a lot of fun. So here's what we talked about in this episode of Mind Pump. I opened up the episode by giving everybody an emotional story of uh, how I went to go donate to some people who need help. And uh, they actually have to pick me. That's uh, kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and that reminded Adam of one they of the sponsors that we work with, Mir. Now, Mir, of course, makes phenomenal cups, uh, insulated cups that you can use for coffee and mugs and other products. But they also donate uh, a portion of all of their profits to uh, different organizations. Uh, great company, again, to work with. Um, and we do have a discount for you. If you go to Mir. Dot com. That's M I I R dot com. Use the code Mind Pump. You get twenty five percent off your entire order. Then we talked about Doctor Drew and how he was talking about the homeless problem uh, here in California. Justin talked I'm about glad somebody's talking about it. <laughs> Justin talked about his post party heartburn problem. He had Ugh. pizza and a pizzuki. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I double peed. That's right. That's he a, hosts a, one of the top fitness move. and health podcasts in the world. He had pizza. And it was pizzuki. a party, Sal. <laughs> Give me a break. Uh, but that did remind me on some studies on melatonin and heartburn. Um, uh, low melatonin levels has been connected to heartburn. Of course, is connected to poor sleep, which reminded me to talk about uh, you know wearing blue light blocking glasses before at least a couple hours before bed that has been Naturally. shown to dramatically raise the amount of melatonin that your body will produce while you're sleeping which gives you better sleep uh, is better for your health and then of course it reduces risk of heartburn now our favorite company of blue light blocking glasses is felix gray they're stylish and they don't turn the whole room red or orange so they don't you don't look crazy um, oh, and we have a hookup for you. Go to Felix Gray Glasses. That's F E L I X G R A Y glasses.com forward slash mind pump, and you'll get free shipping and free returns. Then I talked about Instagram is going to start marking on pictures that are Photoshop. They're going to start saying false advertising. Oh, That's a good thing. Oh, man. Uh, Watch Adam, out, influencers. Adam brought up how TikTok is the second most downloaded. Uh, social media app in 2019. I still don't know what it is. Yeah, uh, we talked about None of us do. how Amazon will be scanning your hand. That's going to be it's a little scary. <laughs> Sign of the beast. I talked about how the average body temperature uh, in modern societies may be dropping. Justin brought up uh, brought up plastic surgery for men and how he's turning 40. Kind of weird. Yeah, <laughs> weird. Yeah, <laughs> not looking into it. I swear. And then we got into a discussion about pretty actresses actresses uh, from actresses. I, I can't, could, it's easy for me to yeah, say, right? Good. From the 1970s and 80s. And then we got into the fitness questions. Here's the first one: When training for strength versus muscle, what's the difference? What if I want to get really strong but I don't want to gain a lot of muscle? Or what if I want to gain a lot of muscle but I really don't care about getting too strong? The next question, this person found out that their testosterone levels are really low and would like help with some natural remedies and strategies to raise testosterone. So we talk all about getting testosterone levels higher in natural men. The next question, this person wants to know if having tight muscles or poor mobility will impede gains in the gym, strength and muscle gains. And the final question, this person wants some tips and tricks to helping to stick with a diet plan when cravings are hitting really, really hard. Also, this month, MAPS HIT is 50% off. Now, HIT stands for High Intensity Interval Training. This is a style of workout that burns a lot of body fat in a short period of time. In fact, studies will show that a 20-minute proper HIT training pr uh, routine will burn as much body fat as a 40-minute normal routine or traditional routine. So, Literally cut your workout time in half, burn just as much body fat, or do it consistently and burn more body fat. MAPS HIT is very effective. It includes all the exercises, all the instructions, all the demos that you need to follow a well-programmed, well-written, high-intensity interval training workout. It's done with weights, so you're going to also build some muscle, and it's 50% off. Here's how you get that discount. Go to MAPSHIT.com, M-A-P-S-H-I-I-T. Dot com and use the code HIT50, H-I-I-T-5-0. There's no space there, and that's for the discount. So I, I got a story to tell you this weekend about how uh, I got emotional. I love stories. Emotional? Yeah, yeah dude, I, I got emotional. when you get emotional. No, so um, ever since I was little, I can remember 
uh, when I was a kid, um, as far back as I can remember, there was always a picture of a, a kid on our fridge that I didn't know. Either a African kid or... Really? Yeah. Oh. Or Are you serious? I swear to God, there's always a picture of a kid. And it wasn't like from the frame, you know, and you get to no. buy the frame and like they leave the family. No, there. and they were always, oh. at, you know, whatever. There was ethnic, you know, they were never... It's not like a kid. I'm like, oh, I better relate it. I'm like, definitely not related to that kid, but why do we have a picture? Yeah. And as I got older, I asked my mom, like, what, what is that? My mom's, oh, the, we sponsor kids every, uh, you know, I, we pick a kid and every month we pay a fee and it pays for the kids, you know, school and clothes and food. Oh, you guys that, know these organizations. Nice. I didn't know they did that. Yeah. You know, these are, okay. So yeah, I'm aware, like the, you know, thir 30 cents a day could save a kid's life. Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, I think, uh, well, so I'll tell you what happened. So that Santa Claus guy. So my mom's done this forever. Right. So we're at, we're having dinner with my parents. Jessica sees it, asks about it. My mom says, oh, this is the, how, whatever kid, like the seventh kid that I, I've worked with. Cause what you do is you sponsor that until they leave school or whatever and then they then you pick another kid so my mom's been doing this you know forever so jessica's like we need to we, let's do this let's try and let's let's check this out I'm like that's a great idea i like this let's let's go home and look this up the organization or whatever no no affiliation or we're not sponsored but world vision is the is the company my mom does it through so anyway we go home and i type in on the internet world vision i pull up the internet the the website and there's a video on there that destroyed me oh really? uh, yes dude so, and it's brilliant. It's like, I, I, as I'm watching this, part of me is in awe of the marketing genius, and the other part of me is just being emotional. So normally the way it works is you sign up, and I guess apparently you get a kid, or you can pick a kid. So you look at pictures, like, I want to sponsor that kid, right? Yeah. What they're doing right now is the kid picks you. Oh. So you, oh. you have say, to apply or something. Turn the tide. You so, apply who you are. So you say, "I want to do this. Yeah, yeah. This is what I want to do. I want to pay forty oh, bucks yeah, a that'll month. Get or, you. Yeah. So I want to pay forty bucks a month or whatever. And you donate, and then you send them your. You take a picture of yourself or you and your family. Send it to them, and Does then it you, like swipe right, swipe left. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And then you wait. No, this guy. And, and no. you wait, and then Creepy. you'll get a an email saying so and so. Picked you and your family. Oh my god! It's like I'm picking you. I want him to be my dad. Yeah, dude. So I was watching the video, and they're showing these kids. That's pick. too much pressure. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of part of it. So uh, it's funny, but so I they show this video of these like kids in it looked like an uh, African village, and there's like all these pictures of you know families that want to do, it. and they walk up, and then you see them picking like. I want that one. So I found myself in the picture, like Wait, we gotta look good, you know. I want to get picked, you know. <laughs> get a haircut, line yeah, up yeah, your beard, quick a little look, bit. look wealthy, Oof. you know, like, uh, <laughs> or whatever. Capable, uh, yeah, yeah anyway. very capable. But it's it's nice, you know. But I remember I was watching the video, dude. And my kids are sitting next to me. I'm like, wow, I, I want to cry. Either I don't cry in front of them because I want them to think their dad is fucking. Yeah, ro rock solid. Or <laughs> yeah. they need to know Stoic. I have a heart. So it was a, it was a bit of a <laughs> well that ruined that ruins my charity story. <laughs> what would you do? <laughs> Well, today's today's. You gave half your sandwich. Well, to the no, I, no. <laughs> today's like the uh, our mirror commercial, and I'm like, I was going to talk about their charity, but it's definitely not like that. What I are mean, they doing? Well, they have. I mean, every time you buy a product, it's cool. They have like you get a little code. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can go online. It's this. I, I think it's really neat how they do this. I've never seen anybody else track it like this. So you can actually see where your money is going to work. And they've now they've surpassed over a million dollars that they've donated over I think over sixty something projects in you know thirty forty different countries all over the world. Wow! And it's just really cool. So like projects for like getting you know, water to people and you, you know, name certain it. jobs. Yeah, or you, I like, you, I, you name it, and then you can see exactly where your you can go on the website, you put in your code, and then you can actually see where where it's going and where it's being where it's funding. Well this so. this really sold me on that company. Yeah. I mean they have good products and all That's that. Great transparency. Yeah, I like that they that they do that. It's kind of cool, you know, the market seems to be rewarding um philanthropy, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh I mean I think you have to do it smart. Um I, I think sometimes companies bake it into their business model which yeah. might not be it's like adding in another but debtor. i mean is that the worst thing you know there could yeah. be worse things You're that right. uh, yeah companies sort of uh take advantage of You're or right. whatever for tax breaks yeah. like, i'd rather them put their money into good causes Dude, speaking of like helping and donating all that kind of stuff did you guys see dr drew was been kind of making the rounds talking about the homeless problem in la i knew he California? was a part of that but what like so what does that entail like what's so he doing? i looked up some statistics um in first off california's homeless Ish, uh, problem rose so much that it caused a nationwide, when they count the total numbers, 
overall in the nation, homelessness rose. Just because of California. Just because of California. Because, wow. Dude, uh, we've been seeing that. Yes. If you look at other states, they've actually had, uh, they've been handling their homeless problem very, very well. Some states have actually dropped. What, by like 15, just shipping them all over here? What? No, no, no. Oh. Like 15 to 20% uh, reductions in, in homelessness. Meanwhile, California, San Jose, by the way, okay, this is the last four years, four or five years, 40% increase. Wow. In, in homeless population Dang, in dude. San Jose, the which, housing market, which, bro. It, no, it's not that. No. You know, it's okay. So that's the thing. Really? Doc, yeah. See, that's the thing. Dr. There's Drew no... was was on these on the shows well, talking about. People want to blame the fact that it's expensive to live, and that's why there's homeless people. But when you interview, mental illness. yes, dude. When yeah. you interview the the people who actually are working on the issue, interview working with homeless. Wait people, a second. Wait a second. That doesn't make sense because the the rise in mental illness is not increasing at 40 percent no there's there. nowhere for them to go they, they used to have like hospitals they used to have places where they would bring them in give them treatment they stopped running these programs they, there's nowhere for them to go the the mental illness is rising and it's concurrent with the drug epidemic that is exploding among that population. What do you mean they can't? There's no. They, we used to have programs where they could go places. Yeah, and they you're, don't. yeah. yeah. You, there used to be state funded, uh, you know, <clears throat> hospitals or treatment programs where, let's say, you're a homeless person and you're mentally ill and on drugs, then the law was you have to t get treatment. You're, we're going to take you in. We're going to put you in this facility, and you have to get treatment. Well, California legislators are like, that's not nice. That's not fair. We shouldn't force people. Like to take treatment or whatever, or whatever, not humane. But in the meantime, what's ended up happening is you've, you've had this homeless problem explode. And in LA, it's such a problem that they're seeing diseases like typhoid start to flourish because wow. you've got all these people shitting directly in the sewer, going straight out to the water, no treatment or anything. Yeah. So, And that's what he was saying. He's like, this is a huge problem. Oh, there's it's a rats. Mental there's all kinds of stuff yeah. as a result of this that are all, I mean, it's it very much looks a lot like, like, you know, what happened with the Black Plague. I mean, you get like all this like unsanitized, like everybody's living outside like yeah. together and it's like, it's a problem. 40% increase in San Jose. Yeah. crazy. And, and, and that's what Dr. Drew said. He says, this is not a... Home is too, homes are too expensive and there's not enough jobs problem. This is not a money problem. This is a mental illness and drug problem. And if we don't treat it as such, we're going to be... And he's 100% right, dude. Well, I, I like was, that. Because I, I was watching these interviews for people who... So what's... Okay, so you know this is not the first time I've heard people campaigning on this or talking about this or trying to solve it. What's the answer, though? Well, he thinks we should have uh, state-funded treatment and it should be part of a mandatory... Uh, program or process that's and i agree i think that might be i'm not i'm almost never pro uh state you know, funded anything but, but in yeah. this case i don't see a market i mean if it gets really bad there might be a market solution but i don't think there isn't one happening now and it could cause some problems and i think again this is a, a mental health a health issue that we're not addressing we think it's oh they just need to places to live or whatever no man, this is the most prosperous. I, I, I you know, yeah, on not. the on the flip side, there's a report that came out that showed that there for the first for first time in a long time in American history, there are more jobs available than people who are out of work. Yeah. That almost never ha happens. We actually have more jobs that are open. Yeah, there's plenty of opportunity. Yeah. That's that's the irony of it. It's like yeah, so it definitely to me it definitely screams like mental health. Like why else would you choose to live uh, in these conditions? Yeah, yeah, and and I was watching these interviews from people who work with uh, like they really work on this problem. And one lady's like, I've been doing this for ten years, and she says, and maybe one person a year is a person who lost their job and is trying to get back on their feet. And she's like, those people are easy to work with. Wow. They get off the street very easily. He goes- How did we not else? foresee this when we cut all that then? I know, right? Oh, because it, it, laws uh, based on good intentions and yep. not on results. Mm -hmm. Yep. Here's the unintended uh, result of that. Unintended consequence type uh, of deal. Wow. Yeah, I know. Wow, that's crazy. insane. Hey, you know, Justin, I wanted to hear uh, about your- Because we last time we talked, you were going to the, the black light- rock yeah. climbing thing which yeah. seems ridiculous to i know me. i know it's, it's actually well lit so oh, i was a little okay. worried about that i know you guys were talking about it's it. all like, dark it's like, yeah. wait a minute this doesn't sound very safe yeah. you know this is kind of a weird concept i guess the 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 owners of like sky high it's that like trampoline kind of a place that uh, they have it all well organized for kids to uh, jump do their whole thing or is it sky high the one where the where you're like uh like skydiving no sky high is where you're flying like okay the, yeah so the, the yeah. jump the i forget what the jump house one yeah called, i think I they, they might be affiliated with that too but but either way, this was like a, a brilliant 
kind of a setup in the warehouse uh, to host parties. Super like chill. Like, so they have different sections of it um, and everything's like really well lit with all black lights. So it's like, like all the neon colors and everything pop and all that stuff. But uh, so the one section of it is where they have like, um, basically they can climb up on these structures and then they have like a belay thing that they can like drop down. And so only one person needs to manage like a group of like 20 something kids. Like they have it all down to like a science to where then they do like, you know, 15 minutes here, 20 minutes here. And then they go over and they do this dodgeball thing where they're throwing uh, uh, balls at these like targets behind uh, the other side. And so it's like it lights up. And so it's like really fun. They throw they And they, of course, they throw it at each other's face and all that. That happens. But uh, and then they have like a section for just like Nerf gun wars where they have all these things that can hide behind and oh, then wow. they shoot each other with goggles. And, and, all that. and this was your your son's birthday. Yeah, my son's birthday party. So Did he, he love it? Or was. Oh, dude, they're going crazy. It was like such a, a boy driven like uh, set of activities. I was like, I don't know any girls that would be stoked. I'm sure there's plenty of girls that would be stoked to do that kind of stuff. It was very rough, crazy, my daughter, you know, like, like awesome stuff going on. My daughter will love that shit. Yeah. So I have one for you guys. Doug, you have to look this up because I actually was meaning to, to search it. It's San Mateo uh, school bus party bus. So I'm with my, I'm with my, yeah, this is funny, right? So I'm with my two, my two best friends this weekend at the cabin and other best my, friends. My, yeah, my other yeah, best man. friends. Starting <laughs> to get jealous every time you say that. <laughs> and one of my buddies brings up, uh, so we have the three kids there, right? And they bring uh, this indoor snowballs. Have you guys seen these? No. They're really cool. They're, they, they look like little snowballs, and they have just enough weight to where you can huck them across the room, but they're <laughs> super soft, so they don't hurt, right? Yeah. And you bring, and the kids just go went bananas in the house, throwing snowballs, you know, fake snowballs all over the place. So and I'm asking him like, oh my god, this is brilliant. Where did you see this? He goes, oh well, last weekend we were at this this you know kids young kids party, and she rented a school bus and they and they had this party and I'm like, party in a school bus. What the fuck is that? I've never even heard of that before. Yeah. And he's describing it to me, and I'm like, like spitball each other. Well, no, he's describing the okay. So the layout of this bus, and I'm hoping Doug can pull it up so you guys can see a vi visual of of what I'll explain. And and listening to it, I'm like. This is a, a kid's thing? And he's like, well, I don't know. that. I mean, they rented it this way. So she rents this school bus, and it's designed like a party bus. The front of the bus, so the, it's literally a school bus, but inside of it, like it's a keg of apple juice? Completely or custom. So the front, the front, like, you know, six rows is converted into one long bench where, like, all the adults hang out, and they're, like, serving alcohol drinks for the adults so they can kind of socialize. And, there. and then the very back of the bus is, like, a giant bed. And the kids are like having a snowball fight in there and they're wrestling around and they're playing in the back and there's, you know, a, a stereo system built into it and there's TVs kind of in and it. And they're driving on the road? No, they, they're oh. not. That's what I, <laughs> that's what I asked. I asked the same thing. I'm like, what? Wait a second. They're driving in the, no, 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 no. Yeah. They're like, it's parked. She's like, she rents it, parks it in front of her house. And then they, and I'm like, and then you guys just hang out in this bus all day long. But when you look at it, you know what it looks like? It looks like a fucking Burning Man thing. It totally looks like somebody, and the bed in the back That's is what like- That's they for, do in the off season. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Why is there a big bed in here? It's in San Mateo, Doug. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a party, did you Google party school bus? I did. Oh, really? You Nothing's coming up. Yeah. Really? You can't, uh, you can't use black lights in that school bus, can you? But I just thought it was really Gross. weird that they, they rented this out, and I'm like, you never cross you guys' mind. This Dude, might have been like a, like a freaking- Go and the and the dude who owns the business who has like four or five of these buses super hippie dude mm. oh yeah and I'm like this doesn't you gotta this, be doesn't this scream Burning Man get high and then have yeah. sex in the back of it <laughs> that's what that's what that's what it's like screams. at night but in the yeah. day like the yeah. kids and everybody yay yeah. it's it's like, bro, like, it's you so, don't even know idea what happens he's sitting with, he's sitting yeah. with his wife getting high and I was like how can we uh, turn our party at life into yeah. our our whole life like how right. can we support this yeah. like, we don't really have to like go you know very far yeah it's a yeah. school bus so we could sell it to yeah. Kids, yeah, I really want like, <laughs> we like, can't sell them drugs, we could sell them parties. I want to just have sex in the back of a bus for my life, what do we, but how can we make money off that? <laughs> I have an idea, it involves uh, children. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, wait uh, a minute, that, that whole party market for kids, though, is brilliant. No, it's brilliant because of what we've seen in the last decade and a half, and we talk about this on the show all the time. Of, 
you know, this we're we're so afraid that kids are gonna get kidnapped and everybody nobody it's goes all out, organized. Yeah, nobody goes outside and plays anymore. And nobody and, goes over each see, other's that, house. That's either. the thing. And and with this, it's like the, the, the parents can drop off uh you know the kids. And so we stayed there because we're hosting the party, but it's like everybody left because there's Costco's right there. Like, yeah, I'll just do my shopping and then I'll meet yeah. you at three, you know. And it's like everything is like super well managed and, and it's like they're locked in this this big warehouse. They're not going anywhere. Yeah, and when you're a parent, you drive it's like, oh, there's a birthday party, cool, we get three yeah. hours break or whatever. Here you go. See but you later. They're brilliant because the, they're usually warehouses, so they're usually in places where the rent is cheap. Yeah. And either it's trampolines or jump houses or something like something. that. Yeah. And there's like two employees. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Literally. No. Two employees. And the, you don't have, there's no food. They don't yeah. sell food. You bring your own food, but you pay no, well, it's well, this food. one sold food, so I, it's funny because I'm like, okay, so pizza, yeah. I'm like, oh, let me guess, Costco, yes, it was Costco pizza, because like, why wouldn't you? It's right there, mm -hmm. you know. It's like, I I ate some, and oh my god, dude, I was like, uh, between that and then we had, he he shares the same favorite like dessert as me, the bazooki. So you guys know what that is, right? It's yeah. This humongous fucking cookie and with ice put, cream like, all over it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, so I ate that, and like, dude. Three in the morning, like like clockwork, heartburn, and then blah, the dragon of throw up. Wait, wait, wait. You ate pizza, pizzuki, and you threw up when you woke up? Like later, that? like way later, at like three o'clock. I thought I was like all good. I'm like medicating and everything, and it just like, dude... I just uh, turned into did, such a bitch. Do you throw? <laughs> do you throw up from having a lot of heartburn? Is yeah, that part the, of it? Yeah, like that is part of it. It just it gets so uncomfortable, and then it like starts stacking up on me, and then just uh, I have did, to. Do have you noticed it. the difference? Uh, you just reminded me of a, a study I read a long time ago. Have you noticed the difference of wearing blue light blocking glasses or turning lights off at night and heart and, and reductions in heartburn? Heartburn and blue light? I haven't yeah. uh, what? associated that, but I I know that it definitely helps me get a good deeper sleep. Okay. Like, yeah. Because yes, melatonin um is is they've done studies to show that low melatonin levels can can contribute to stomach ulcers and or uh and heartburn what? so taking melatonin what? can help with the heartburn but also just having naturally higher levels or healthy levels of melatonin so i'd be interested to see if you were i would never make that connection yeah so like that's you, interesting you know next time you you know when you go home or whatever put your felix rays on wear them turn off the lights or whatever and then pay attention in the difference between that and not doing it. Well, I will definitely do that because I mean, I'm. But don't I'm, have pizza. Yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> or pizzuki. Well, that's the thing. Now I have to. I'm, I'm on the recovery now. <laughs> like, I have to like clean up the. Di everything has to be dialed in. I've had such bad sleep. Like it just really affects like everything from there. Dude, are you are you guys having a tough time getting out of the holidays? It's like the holiday. Yeah, same. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's, it's trying too, to abandon all that stuff. Too like, much food and drinking and it's just too much shit. Not well, good right sleep. when I, I just last week I just started to get better. And I had two workouts and then we take off again for, we took off for four days up at a cabin, you know? Mm. So like, you know, chili and cookies and like just oh. bullshit cabin food, you know what I'm saying? So no, I feel like a mush right now. I, I, I'm, I'm being good with nutrition because you guys know I did, I went keto, but it wasn't because I'm trying to lose weight or anything. I'm just trying to, to get the inflammation down and the, you know, get the cognitive bent. Boy, keto really sucks for a pump, doesn't it? Uh, Holy yeah. shit, man. I'm in the gym yesterday working out and I'm like... My muscles are flaccid. They will not. Uh, they will not engorge at all, no matter how many sets. <laughs> wow. Yeah. What are we talking uh, about right now? Getting a pump. I, I got <laughs> hot for a minute. Yeah, <laughs> getting a pump yeah, in my yeah. seat. Anyway, there. did you guys see what Instagram's going to do with uh, photoshopped images? What? Oh, we yeah. Drop the knowledge. What's happening? So Instagram. This is this is crazy. This is cool. I think total market response. I think they're trying to stay ahead of the eight ball here, but Instagram is going to start labeling. Photoshopped images. What? Yes. How? How do they detect? Uh, they whether and what? What constitutes Photoshop? Right. It's, so, okay. So the app is going to begin determining the authenticity of an image. Wow. Using a combination of feedback from the community and technology, then the image is passed on to third-party independent fact checkers, hmm. and if they determine that the image has been altered, they put a false information warning message that they add to the post. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, man. Yes. How cool is that? Now, so this is going to be interesting because you know they have that. What's it like called? Like the fitness space is screwed. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know those, those fake butts. You know yeah. the 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 Facetune app, right? Which is like one of the most downloaded apps that they have out there. Uh -huh. Is you know they, they you can do subtle stuff like whiten your teeth, mm -hmm. you know, or make your eyebrows darker, or make your cheeks more rosy, and so. 
I, I'm curious to like how like what will it pick up? Like, is it, are we talking about people that distort their body and make their waist look smaller and add abs to I themselves? Or are we talking about someone who throws a Valencia filter on there and yeah. you're going to get thrown? Like, that's going to be yeah. really interesting to see what's how. Wrong with the, what's wrong with the Valencia filter? Yeah, yeah it's my <laughs> favorite. Uh, yeah. I, I, I think it's uh, I, I, it's a good question. Probably the more that someone photoshops, the more likely it is to get flagged. The more I, egregious stuff. That yeah, and I also think they're probably going to target, or initially at least, until the technology gets amazing, they're probably going to want to target like health and fitness and diet posts. Wouldn't yeah. you think? I would like think post so. Post telling you to buy things to lose weight or to look better. I, I would assume they're going to probably really. Now, when it, when are they supposed to roll that. this out? When, what did they say when it's supposed? No, to... I didn't. I didn't read that far, but it's 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 definitely happening. You know, speaking of of apps that are downloaded and stuff, is you know they. Uh, I read this article. The guy who created Snapchat is saying that he believes that TikTok is going to take over Instagram. Wow. It was no the, way. It was the second most, number one most downloaded app <clears throat> in wow. 2019 was WhatsApp. Number two most downloaded app in 2019 was TikTok. So TikTok is so obnoxious. Well, guys, it's, it's so, just it's short so, videos, yeah, right? You guys are also we're all fucking old, dude. I yeah. know. I, mean, I, I was trying to remind you guys this. Like it's it's lame I've to talked us. to my kids about it, and they're it's funny. They they make fun of people that use it. Like oh like really? His generation, yeah, yeah. They they have like a name for people that are like on TikTok all the time, and so like so what, clown on them. So it's okay. Explain it because I know a little bit. It's like bit, Vine right? meets Snapchat meets Instagram. It's like a combination. Can you do just a post? Just a picture? I don't fucking know. Or is it all, no, oh. I do. Andrew that. says no. I was trying okay. to mess with Andrew it. It's like no. you have to like add like it's like a short video. It's like kind of like Vine, isn't it? Like Vine, is it more like Vine? Would you say that? Yeah, yeah. I would. It has to be uh, organized in a really short thing, and like everybody like lip syncs on it. It's like I'm over it. Well, I get yeah, whatever. It's it, it adds it so you have the visual side like Instagram, but then it adds in the entertainment side. So it's it's more entertaining than probably going. You know what to- I feel like? I feel like it's they'll come out with a a new social media app, and then as that audience gets older. Then the a new right. one will come out totally, yeah. and that's because Facebook was the one. Now yeah, Facebook is, and all, Facebook is very established. All your make, dinosaurs are left there, but yeah. great place to advertise. Like advertising on Facebook is superior to. And why is that? Because it's older, right? It's yeah. older. Yeah. yeah, Instagram will be next. It's just riddled with everybody arguing about political shit. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So. <laughs> I'm not coming to Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, dude, I have I have friends and family members that are just so bad at that. And then one of them yesterday posted this post and was like. Why can't we all just get along? And I don't know why everybody. I'm like, you're fucking number one for that shit. What are you talking about? <laughs> Come on, let's get along. You start shit 99 percent of the time. All of a sudden, you want to be throwing it out there. Cool first. with everybody. Yeah. Anyway, you guys see uh, what Amazon is doing with the scan your hand. Scan your what? hand. So they're is that they're, the sign of the beast or whatever. No, no, no. Oh, no. So yeah, it's happening. <laughs> so I think this is actually brilliant and really cool. Six, six, six. So you'll you'll download and your your credit card will be attached to your your hand, your fr- your fingerprint in your hand. Okay, because this I'll, literally how? isn't this literally part of the. It, yeah, it is. This so is you'll happening. you'll just so when you go so <laughs> now, now you're a number. I mean, they're trying to make it as I mean, obviously your phone was like the most recent where you could just yeah. you, you know yeah. Apple Pay or whatever that yeah. and scan it, but that requires you go to an app and open. It, yeah, we knew we were going to get here. Where now it's going to be connected to your hand, and you'll be able to just swipe over one of those infrared, and it'll wow. pick scan your hand, and then you pay on your way out. What a trip, dude! That's going to be that's brilliant, though. But that's it, crazy, dude. I, wasn't there a warning? I mean, isn't that like a big thing with Christians? Like that was a warning that yeah, they'll all yeah, be forever. marked with yeah, the thing, and yeah, if you don't have marked. the mark, then you're not in the. Oh, I've never not heard that. Yet. How did you oh, not I, know this? Yeah, you? I don't think it's just the thing. With Am Christians. I making this shit up? Yeah, yeah, I think you no, know. this is all in the Left Behind series, dude. You didn't read all those books? No, no, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was no. hilarious because they did the whole like, uh, yeah, when everybody like ascends and the, the ones that are left and all that kind of stuff. We'll have it's digital. Big, we'll have digital big revelation stuff. Yeah, it's real. It's real crazy. It's real out there. It's it's only for the hardcore. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I never uh, heard that one. So yeah, I, I, so crazy. I read another crazy article. So you guys know what the average? You know what your normal body temperature is when you're you know you take your temperature. Ninety eight point five. Was it ninety eight five or seven? Ninety eight point six. Oh, six. Right? So ninety eight point six. We're both wrong. <laughs> we've we've it's been established as this is the average uh, body temperature. So yeah. if you don't you don't have, that was this, my radio station. Yeah, I this, listened to that. <laughs> yeah. My bad. You're supposed <laughs> to be here and not have it. This means you don't have a fever or whatever. And this was established a long time ago, where they took twenty thousand people's temperature, and I don't remember how long ago, but it was a while ago. Well, researchers at Stanford University are reporting that the average temperature for humans, or at least for modern Americans, has dropped. 
It's no longer 98.6. Well, we have global warming, but we have body cooling. We're cooling <laughs> yeah. down. 97.9 now is the average. That's what? a big difference, dude. That's a significant difference. Maybe what do they attribute? Maybe that it's to? our body adapting to the warmer climate. No, I don't think it's that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> We're cooling down. Such a climate. No, you know weird. what they think it might be. This is speculating now. But so first off, they've they've already observed this. So they are saying for sure, average body temperature among Americans has dropped. It's no longer ninety eight point six. They think it's ninety seven point. But I say nine or whatever. Yeah. But here's All the speculation. Cold hearts out there. Here's the speculation. Stupid. People are less terrible active. Dad no, terrible dad joke. You guys are fucking, <laughs> fucking cold Come hearts. Come on. All right, hold on. Let me finish here. Okay, sorry. <laughs> cold hearted snake. Oh my god, he's on a roll. <laughs> Into her eyes. They uh they they think it's because our metabolisms are slower. We're we're burning less hot because we have less muscle and we're less active. Oh, I could see that. Yes, so, interesting. So now we're measuring people's temperatures and they're lower. Now, if that's true, though, then you should be able to tease out like, let's measure a bunch of super lean, yeah. fit people, and then let's measure a bunch of really but overweight the, people and see if there's a difference. But they're in so much sweatier. You know? That's what they. <laughs> <laughs> What's sweaty? <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe they're people. running cold, but they're all sweaty everywhere. Yeah, yeah I mean, no. Yeah. That's a how, good point, Justin. Yeah. How yeah. interesting yeah. is that, that, though, right? That is, it is interesting. It's more interesting to me of why, though. You know, like it. You don't like you don't like my my global, your global warming, warming theory. theory? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think I like that more than your fat people theory because uh. I feel like Justin's right. Like mm. really fat people are sweaty all the time, bro. No, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. They're they're always need that AC blasting. You know? Yeah, no, no. Yeah, I do too. They, I feel like they run hot, man. No, I don't think that's what. But it is. if that if you're right, then we should be able to tease that out, right? We should be able to have. You know, a thousand or ten thousand, you know, really fit people, and then really overweight people, and then see if, if we run. Different. Well, that's what they were saying. They were saying that fit people with more muscle tend to have higher uh, internal uh, body temperatures. Wow. So, and that's actually the truth. Let's be honest. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know it is. When you build muscle, uh, what's one of the first things that when you're that your clients would report to you when they, as they were building, muscle, especially females, mm. female clients. Uh, especially would report to me that when they would lift weights and build muscle with me, that they notice that they're not as cold at night, mm. that they feel a little bit warmer. My, and, and of course, men tend to feel warmer than women, probably because we have more muscle mass and yeah. we're, and we're hairier. Dude, there's there's some weird things going on with men lately. Why? Because okay, so there's a new trend happening in Silicon <laughs> Valley, and this is like amongst your executive kind of people or people that are like you know holding a position where they're trying to maintain a certain youthfulness. And so the, the new trend is like if you're over 35, like you're getting plastic surgery and you're getting Botox, like men, uh, in order to not look a certain age, like you look more like energetic, like vibrant, whatever like terms you want to throw out there. But this is like the new thing. It's like it's made its way up into that realm where they, they care so much about like having to look youthful. Oh, you know, that's such a side effect of, of us uh Put, placing all the value on youth and showing no value on age and wisdom. It's yeah, crazy yeah. to me. You know, in other cultures, old cultures, wisdom and age is is, is valued. So that's that's insane. What are they they're doing after 35? Yeah. You're still a baby. I know. It's it's weird. It's like it, it's almost like What exactly was it saying? Like there's an Botox increase by a certain Yeah, ma yeah, a massive increase in that in in uh you know, amongst our crazy bubble we have here for all these guys that are like out there in, in in front of the public, they want to present themselves, and like I think it has a lot to do with the biohacking kind of community. Kind of started right. this whole trying to live forever thing, and so everybody's so conscious of trying to like exude I feel like, this. Youth. I feel like that's who would do it first. I mean, you're already if you're sticking weird things up your ass and your ears up your nose, like why not jab a needle in your forehead to look a little bit younger too? It's mm. like I feel like right. they're injecting and doing all kinds of random shit. Why not go that route also? I don't know anybody though that would do that. I don't have any friends. Do you guys have anybody that you guys no, know that would? Oh my, that my would friend. Well, my client was the one that kind of pointed me in this direction and showed me all these examples. I was like, what? Like, I didn't like, that just sounds like such a, a Hollywood thing. You know, I didn't realize that was happening. Just like, like professionals around here trying to like, you know, promote their business. I, well, pe people generally tend to be uh, quiet about it when they get stuff done to right, themselves. Right, right. But men, I would imagine, especially. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, too I'm many. sure they didn't want it, you, it public. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't see a lot of guys going up to their buddies like, dude, you know what I did you know, the weekend? 
Well, because too, there. I mean, it is true. Like, there's ageism in terms of like uh, when they're hiring and like you lose a job, you come. It's like really hard for you know for these guys around here to to get a job again. Like, if you're over like forty or something, there's mm -hmm. some statistic about that. So, so let me ask you guys this. So, all of us are. That's are, I didn't know that. That's mm -hmm. interesting. It, well, it, you know what? Tech is such a, a young, uh, you know, dynamic field that maybe that could be. Well, true, and right? you think of like LinkedIn and Instagram, and like we're moving in this world where that people use that as like applications now and mm. so and it's a very visual plat those are both very visual platforms well let me ask you guys this so we're all either 40 or getting close to 40 what easy guy. would you guys would you guys Dude, i'm 40 in a few days yeah happy birthday bro. yikes yeah. would you guys want your faces to look like you did when you were 28 or do you like your face now better oh, be honest i, I mean, like my face i'm now. seasoned yeah, you know I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah I, way better, right? Yeah, I don't know about way it. better. I was pretty handsome in my mid twenties. Yeah, yeah, I'm not saying you weren't handsome. <laughs> yeah. But I'm fixed my grill. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm okay. Yeah. But I'm saying, <laughs> would you want to <laughs> trade your face there for me? Uh, but I'm saying, would you want to trade your face? Would you want the twenty? Eight year old Adam face or the I mean not enough to where I'd go do surgery because I'm not one of those guys but I can appreciate how how you yeah. know, youthful I look. You're the toys. most like who's the most likely to get <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Botox Adam. Yeah, yeah. I mean if we I mean, I'm we sure put that to out a of, vote out of the three of us of course I'm also the most likely to match his clothes to work today yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying like that's fucking <laughs> I guess I win the, I guess I win I guess I win that fucking award uh, but uh, uh, like the I, win, I care award I win yeah. Yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah I win the I care award yeah. but I would I most certainly I would never ever do plastic surgery or even shoot Botox. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. I know I wouldn't do well, that. Well, you've been blessed but with I good fat storage on your face, though. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I think you'll be okay. yeah. But I can't. I, I would. Fat. I would admit that you know, there's a there's definitely a difference, man. I look back. I mean, shit. You and I were just looking at <laughs> a, a picture of you and I when we first met, just what five six years ago. Yeah. And you know, I look I look better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? A lot more gray. Just to be frank so, about yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, a little bit of wrinkles coming in now. Bald. You you know what I'm saying? Like, it accelerates. Uh, yeah, it. dude. I just, uh, I mean, the, it, all that really matters is my girl's fooled. You know what I'm saying? She thinks I look more handsome. Which right. I, yeah, yeah. So yeah, as, long as, yeah, as long as she, as long as she thinks. Or that, they say that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what know? they say. And then they I, have a really young boyfriend. You down. It starts, yeah. <laughs> it accelerates though. It's like looking back five years now, it looks like I'm looking at a new person, you know? It's like, holy cow, that was just five years ago? Oh. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Justin, are you excited for turning 40 or what? I am actually. Yeah. Like I, it's, it's kind of strange, but, uh, cause I was, I mean, I've been kind of talking with my dad about it, even like I was over there, like celebrating uh, my son's birthday and stuff. And like, I remember vividly his, t like the time he turned 40 and, uh, it was, it's pretty funny. We we're laughing about it because like my mom, like specifically did what he did not want like my dad did not want a surprise party at all wanted to be low-key all this kind of stuff right my mom goes over the top she invites like everybody and their mother like we're all waiting for my dad to show up like behind furniture and all this stuff at uh -huh. my neighbor's house and like he's just okay like coming in to see what was wrong with you know whatever like at, at my neighbor's house like he was gonna go fix something comes in we bombard him yeah surprise yeah. and then he just he just like shakes his, he about face like took off no way <laughs> he literally left. left and le left us all there just like confused <laughs> that's epic yeah he was so no i was like oh my god and he's like i had to like you know grovel for like three months just to like you know be on good graces again with your mom after that and i was like i was like women are crazy he's like no yeah i'm like i'm we a, canoodled with i'm it. salty like that i would do some shit like that too after i told somebody no i do not want a, a surprise party yeah. i hate i hate fucking uh, surprises yeah. i like to give surprises i don't like it i don't like surprises you don't anymore. like them no because you know why people are staring at you for your reaction yeah. And I can't. And you always have the wrong reaction. I have the wrong reaction always. <laughs> don't get me a fucking gift. Don't surprise me. Don't do any of that because I will fucking ruin your day. It's like I my... get it now, but back then I was like, oh, well, like how dare we're all here, Dad? Like, what the? But now, like, I get it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, I'm like, I wouldn't want like. Would you? Well, are, are you? How you guys feel about that? Are you? Are you an anti surprise guy too? I mean, I yeah, I I'd, I'd, I'd prefer not. I'd prefer to kind of know like what I'm getting. But you know what? If 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 it happened, I'm not gonna. I probably wouldn't pull that move. Like I would have been like, all right, uh, you got me. Let's okay, let's everybody calm down. Yeah. You know? I I. What about you? I feel the, like you like surprises. No, you yeah. know, it, I don't necessarily. I don't like yeah. them. I don't hate them. I, you know what I don't like about surprises is mm. that I don't like not knowing. 
So then I think to myself, like, you knew about this? <laughs> and I didn't, you know? You held this for yeah, me? fuck. You know, no, but I, I don't I don't mind, but I'm not, like, super pro. You know, parties are not really for you. That's the thing. Like, I, I was having this conversation with Jessica a while ago. It's like wedding, like, same thing. Yeah, and yeah, I'm like, you know, right, having, exactly. having a birthday party for your kid with lots of people and all that kind of stuff, it's not necessarily for the kid. It's for everybody else to celebrate. So it's like, you know... Your surprise party, part of it's yeah, it's your celebration, but really it's everybody else yeah. celebrating th- their appreciation for you. You know what I mean? So yeah. <laughs> you don't want to be a dick. It just made for a really awkward. T- and it's funny because I thought he was so old. Yeah, when he was when he turned 40. forty. Yeah, and now that's me, and it just it. I was just. Uh, it's hard for me to 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 yeah. conjure that. Well, what's the what's the what's the average lifespan now? Seventy is it seventy four? Yeah, in I, I swear it keeps moving out. Yeah, so we got we're 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 more than halfway there. I'm going for one twenty, dude. Think about that. We're more than halfway. Don't you feel like we're hitting hundred? I feel like I'm doing hundred. Yeah, you're, you're gonna live to hundred. Yeah, yeah. yeah it right. wasn't until just recently do I like. Then I'm gonna crank up the speed. feel the age thing. Like uh, people used to ask, say, I'm like, man, I remember being in my mid lower 30s going like i still feel 20 you know yeah. i don't i can't say that anymore yeah 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 i can't say that anymore like it's although i had a moment where i started hearing a ring in my ear i was like and i'm like is this always gonna be like this like i was freaking out dude i was like i'm not turning 40 this might stay bro uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah you threw up after eating pizza, <laughs> yeah, after eating pizza dude. what's happening to me <laughs> i'm stiff as no. fuck so you, 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 you really think we're gonna live to 100 i will make i i think no i really no i didn't go that hard in the paint man no bullshit yeah. bro uh, <laughs> if you look at bro it's okay, all gonna come back to okay haunt us. right now yeah, yeah if we lived i mean right now we're all super great and healthy and stuff like that I did but, like a decade of body slamming you exactly know, injuries think about your teens and 20s yeah. especially bro 20s oh bro. yeah i went oh. kind of hard i didn't go like mick jagger hard though bro we were uh, drinking yeah. fucking ephedra well, he's, still, drinks. he's still going hard dude i mean those right guys, yeah, that's they, i think that might what, be the founding of maybe we need to go they, back they know something we don't dude no it doesn't make you live longer it just it just weeds out everybody else <laughs> whoever's <laughs> left is gonna live a long time around you is just gonna <laughs> yeah. perish oh, your and you die. just drain them like a vampire <laughs> mick jagger would live to 200 if it wasn't for all that crazy uh, shit. Look yeah, at him, yeah, 76, probably. bro, just kicking ass. Yeah, dude. Or what about... Jane Fonda, 82. Dude, she yeah, looks... Looking dude. hot. Bro, I can't even believe yeah. it. I was watching that show again last night, and I'm looking at her, I'm like, this woman moves. <laughs> I've trained so many men and women in their 70s and 80s, and I know how they move. She moves... When you watch her walk and stuff on that show and bend She's over and pick hot. these up. And- oh. Doug's still got posters of her in his room. <laughs> I can say of Jane Fonda, yeah, 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 and yeah. The, like you little unitard, Ted, yeah. yeah just, <laughs> Doug be spanking it to Jane Brown, Fonda still. Brown, Brown, Brown. I mean, those uh, long socks like, yeah. all the way up. Got my original leg warmers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a little old. That's a good who, look, ju- Doug. Who were your your like celebrity oh, crushes back then? Back in the day was Farrah Fawcett. Oh, yeah. you remember her? That was, get, that was the hairdo. Now, did you have wore, the right? nipple poster? You oh, know, the that, famous one. All the boys had that one for sure. Yeah, that was that was a big one. Was was who else is who was Big back then. Show too. me the poster. Uh, Charlie's, Angels. Charlie's Angels, right? Yeah, let me yeah. see. Let me see the Farrah Fawcett. I'm, oh, she, I'm that, pic, that po- you know the old poster. No, I know. I'm gonna see. Well, I mean, once you show it to me, maybe I will. But oh I'm yeah, gonna... you'll recognize it. She's got the red. She's got like the little tank top, and you can see the nipple poking through. Type wow, of, you know. boy, you know the detail know, right? of that. So, Jesus, it's a I'll famous one. It. Yeah, no, somebody's no, no. been masturbating right to old black and white photos. You've never seen that photo uh, right there. The second oh one. yeah, yeah. All right then. Okay, okay. Oh, you've had a couple drinks. Yeah, that's hot still today. Yeah, it is. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Jesus. I'm not that old. (laughs) Yeah, everything her body temperature was right there. (laughs) (laughs) What year is that right there? What year is that right there? It's got to be 70 something, right? Probably 75 or something. No, no way. No, mid 70s? Mid 70s, I think. Maybe you're right. Let me double check. Look at her with the Nike Cortez too. Look at her. She's got style, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, she was the jam back in the day, dude. Yeah. 76. 76. That's when that, that photo's taken? Mm-hmm. On point, dude. And what, how, did she, how did she get famous? Was she, was she first in movies? Charlie's or? Angels. Oh, the original. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And that who's, was, who's I like the, Three's Company. That was the one that did the oh, is it, Master it, commercial. Is she, right? Summer, uh, Suzanne uh, Summers. Suzanne Summers. Yeah, Suzanne Summers. That was like when I was, when I was forced to to watch Jazzercise. You know, I had to go to the classes with my mom, and then I'm sitting there watching, and uh, funny things happen. <laughs> That's when you discovered your puberty. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Suzanne Summers. You know, she was an actress. She did Three's Company. <laughs> Made way more money selling fitness equipment. I mean, well, in quotations, I'll say fitness equipment in quotes because yeah. it was the thigh master it was a piece of crap. But she made millions and millions and mo- millions of dollars off that. God. Still though, it's still sold. It's sold yeah. as like a gimmick today. It is. Yeah. 
Where, where's where's our piece of plastic we need to push? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. We need to figure this out. Who else was it back then that was considered a tri- what's uh, uh was wasn't there another girl, dark hair? I can't think was it Rachel something? Am I tripping? Well, Doug? this are you going seventies still? Because like eighties was uh, okay. Eighties was like Cindy Crawford. That was like the far that's like No, she Cindy was Crawford was nineties. Yes. Yeah, Even nineties? Yeah, Cindy yeah. Crawford was early nineties. Bo Derek. Bo Derek. That's oh, one of the seventies. It's like you gotta think of like Dallas and all those like soap operas, right? Like yeah. All that stuff. Who's that blonde girl from the eighties that was like the hottest girl uh, that every guy wanted to date? Uh, Pamela Anderson. No, oh, she's nineties also. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah, 90s, yeah, 90s plus. God, what is her name? From the eighties. Oh, from eighties. Yeah, and there's that one dude that dated all the hot like uh, actresses, and he was on that one show um, where he was like the babysitter. Okay, forget you. Oh my god! I, I, I guarantee <laughs> listeners are freaking out right now, screaming. Yeah, yeah. So like, Who's the boss? No, yeah. no, do not. Yeah. Oh damn it! I Doug should be the one that should help oh, you no, out. I got all '90s references. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not. I mean, good for the '80s. I didn't come here till lady something, so I, would, I couldn't help you with the '70s. Oh, Charles in charge. What's his name? Oh, him? Yeah. What's his name? Uh, Charles in charge. Yeah. But- anyway, he dated the girl. I'm going like this, is like three levels now. Yeah. He dated the girl, Scott Bale. He dated. I feel like Sal's way older than he's uh, professing. I think so too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> On the inside, yeah, Most she, references are like yeah, early like, 70s. I know, bro. Suspect right like, here, wait dude. Wait a minute. Trying uh, to wrap us all together then, like we're dude. close to the yeah. same age. I'm yeah, not. we're all about forty or so. Yeah, lies, dude. Uh, no. Yeah. Anyway, he's I'll. Re- I know. I'll remember it when we when we're done. I can't. Episode. We're really close. You know this, right? Like, I can't wait till like the audience is like new and we can put all four of our pictures and we can try and let somebody try and. Are you thinking of Heather Locklear? Heather Locklear. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. there it is. She wow. was she was the one from the eighties. Okay, she was, yeah, she's she's money. Thank okay. you very yeah, much. Yeah, okay, for good. Sure. I'm done. Good job. All right, we, Doug, we Doug had got to go, there. Doug had to go uh, deep into the spank bank for that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that one was way under the mattress. He's like, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that's right. I Back in my that. day, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we had to use our imagination. <laughs> my mom threw that away one time. I was uh, mad. Oh shit! First question from Big Country ninety two. When training for strength gains versus muscle gains, what's the difference and how can you focus on one more than the other? Okay, so uh, you can focus on one more than the other, but I want to say this. They are so closely connected uh, that training exclusively for one is not going to... Both both belong in each program. They do. If your goal is strength gain, right, you you should... Muscle size is connected to how strong you are. 100%. And how strong you are or training for strength builds muscle. They're very, very closely connected. Here's the big difference. The big difference, besides rep ranges and all that stuff, because we can get into that as well, the biggest difference, in my opinion, is if you're training purely for strength, you're probably going to focus on the skill of strength more than anything else. In other words... I want to be as strong as possible. Let's be specific. I want to be as strong as possible in the squat. Right. That means I'm going to practice the skill of squatting. Right, because then you could sharpen up the technique. There's a lot of things that you can do to revisit to you know to allow you to, to lift more weight because that's the only real goal. Like You want to be able to move the weight more effectively. And, of course, that requires more strength, which then you end up building muscle. But the, the actual focus of it, you could you yes. know, direct more. Because it's, it's technique. It's also the skill of how the muscles fire in, in, you know, perfectly for that particular lift. That's a lot of strength. Like you look at power lifters and they practice their lifts uh, constantly, constantly and yeah. just master the skill of well, strength. Well, I would, I would say too that it, it's when when one is more of a goal than the other. So if it's more strength, then you're you're just spending more time in that type of a phase versus like a hypertrophy type training. And when you're more focused on building muscle and the look uh, uh, of your physique, you're spending a little more time in hypertrophy than you are strength. Like mm-hmm. so... You know, when I look at like bodybuilders, for example, if there's a mistake that some of even the pros tend to make is they're so heavily focused on hypertrophy, they don't get an, they don't ever cycle in like a strength, but the good ones do <clears throat> the ones that really know what they're doing, train a lot of hypertrophy, but they intermittently have strength cycles that they, mm-hmm. they go in that those are some of your, your best bodybuilders know to do that where they have a, a cycle of you know, four to six weeks that they run and they're training in the low rep range, three to five repetitions because they know the importance. But then they cycle back out and then they're staying more towards that eight to 12 mm-hmm. rep range for a majority or the bulk of their programming. 
And then the, the reverse is true for a strength training athlete. Now, strength training athlete who's more heavily focused on strength, they're going to spend a majority of their programming in that probably three to five rep range, and then occasionally they're going to move they're going to move into the hypertrophy. Here's some of the similarities between <coughs> training for strength and training for muscle. And again, remember they're very very closely uh, connected. Some of the similarities include a lot of the exercises, the best strength exercises like squats and deadlifts and rows and presses are also some of the best muscle gain exercises. Oh, this is where there's debate. Uh, they're also training. They're also using uh, relatively heavy weight. That's very common. Uh, although strength athletes like to train in the lower rep ranges, they both still train with resistance, and the rep ranges aren't super, super <clears throat> different. But now let's talk about the differences. Let's get back to exercises. Trying to gain muscle, you tend to utilize it more exercises. That's really the big difference, I would say. If you're looking mm -hmm. at... Yeah. Someone just trying to strength and someone want to build muscle, they're both going to squat, but the guy wanted to, or girl wanted to build muscle is going to do other exercises on top of it. They're looking for more variety, more volume, different angles. Yeah, right, if, you're, a, kind of if you're a strength athlete, right, so you're a power lifter, an Olympic lifter, no one gives a shit how much you, you reverse fly. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but if you're a bodybuilder, that matters, right? Mm -hmm. If you if you care about you know building and sculpting a physique and building mm -hmm. a, a well-balanced muscle like the delt, then you're going to be focused on in, on reverse fly. So right. that's I, to me that's really although there is there is this uh, this debate about uh, people that are training for muscle that the best exercises aren't technically uh, squatting and deadlifting. This is an area where I think that we disagree with some of the people that uh, think that. You know, deadlifting. I mean, like a bent over row versus like a deadlift. Well, even I just about? got tagged. I got tagged. I know you got tagged too. I, I did. Saw, you got tagged on it, right? The, yeah. the the guy who's talking. There's a handful of these guys. Yeah. The deadlift uh, is not a back exercise. Right. It's working the hips and the glutes and the hamstrings, and it's a okay. Again, a little rant here. This is my beef with uh, academia. You guys do a shit job of communicating. You really do. You do a shitty job of it because yes, that's technically true. Technically. The prime movers of a deadlift are not the the lats or the rhomboids, <clears throat> excuse me, or the traps. It's the glutes and the hamstrings and you know the so mainly lower body muscles. That's true. But if you've been training people for a long time, like I have, or anybody else who's trained people for a long time, you have them deadlift. You notice a profound effect on the musculature of the back, which is why I consider a deadlift to be a phenomenal. Back exercise. So although they're technically true, all they do is confuse a bunch of people. And now you have a bunch of people saying, I'm not going to deadlift because I'm already doing leg exercises and I want to do. Well, it, you're also just <clears throat> assuming that the the concentric or eccentric portion of an exercise is the only and most important part of an exercise. We talk about the benefits of isolation and, you know, what is like one of the most heavy loaded isolation exercises? You mean isometric? Or isometric, excuse yes. me. Uh, isometric exercise that you could possibly do. Yeah, yeah that's deadlift. the one. Yeah. I mean, where else can yeah. you, where else are you going to do something that's isometric that's 400 pounds, you know, mm -hmm. and, and yeah. your back is what is holding that in that place. You're a fool if you think that doesn't You're just not going to get that kind of demand with any of the exercises. You're a fool yeah. if you think that's not going to stimulate a ton of of back growth and development from doing that. Yeah, and yeah, it does. We know we know this just through experience. Um, so here's another here's another difference. Strength athletes might do more sets of fewer exercises, whereas people focusing on building muscle might do less sets of more exercises. So here's an example: <clears throat> a strength workout might be you know five sets of bench press, whereas a muscle building workout might be three sets of bench press two sets of flies uh, on an incline and one set Back of cable fly or something like that. Else, yeah. Right, right. So just more variety, different angles. Uh, rep ranges tend to be different. Building muscle, people who want to build muscle, I think uh, you know they tend to spend more time in that 8 to 12 or 15 rep range. People wanting to build just strength will spend more time in the lower rep ranges. And and the truth is, unless you are a bodybuilder or a power lifter or Olympic lifter, this really belongs in everybody's routine. Totally. There's value for everybody. Everybody. No matter what, even if you're like somebody who's like, oh, I care more about strength than I do muscle. Doesn't matter. This Both these phases and programming belongs in your routine for max benefits. Totally. Yeah. The only people that... I would say that should spend more time in one or the other is somebody who's very sport specific, whether it be bodybuilding 
or someone who is just a strength training athlete. If someone who is going to a powerlifting meet where they're only going to bench, deadlift, or squat, yeah, okay, reverse flies don't belong that much well, into your Well, speaking to the reverse fly, I mean, if you're thinking, too, of just being corrective with it, right? So, like, being able to address things like that that are, like, you know, deficiencies where I do need that support and I need to develop those muscles to be able to, you know, hold my shoulder in, in place and to be able to track properly and not create, you know, impingements and in, in things in the future future uh, because I'm just like constantly just loading from one direction. And so I'm building, you know, these muscles like substantially, but you know, now you need to reinforce that and reinforce the joints. And so going back into hypertrophy style phase, like it helps to kind of address a lot of these yeah. issues. And, and, and again, I'm, like with Adam saying, uh, most people should train for both. I've had athletes who I've trained who competed in uh, weight category type sports like jujitsu, judo, wrestling, or boxing. And they'll say to me, I want to get a lot stronger, but I don't want to gain any muscle because I have to stay in my weight class. Mm. Now, I still train them in ways to make them stronger and build muscle. It was just a function of our diet that prevented them from gaining lots of weight. Now, why is that important? Because I still want the loudest muscle building signal so that you're lean and you have muscle so that we can preserve muscle through this process of getting you to you know meet your weight requirements. So for most people... Uh, the vast majority of you listening, you should train for strength or strength, classical strength training phases, low reps, lots of sets of fewer exercises and the types of exercises that are that are the best for strength. And you should also spend some time in that bodybuilding kind of style of training. You bring up an, actually another good point, like the, the CNS uh, adaptation portion of this is mm -hmm. a little bit different, right? So if you are, if you're training for strength, we're training where you are trying to generate the most output from your CNS versus training for muscle. It's like more of a connection, right? Yeah, and that's the skill component. That really is the skill component. Like the more times you squat perfectly, the better your central nervous system gets at giving you the most ideal squat for maximum leverage, maximum strength. Um, and it, that's what that's what you're doing when you're going up and you're doing five or six sets of three reps mm -hmm. of a squat and resting you know, two minutes or whatever in between sets and just push it. It's what you're doing. You're training your, the skill of squatting under heavy loads and you're going to get, you're right, Adam, that kind of adaptation versus I'm going to go do more reps. After three sets, I'm done with my squats. Now I'm doing leg press and lunges and leg curls and all these other exercises, getting a pump. That's more of that muscle. Build. But they both, they both contribute, yeah, you know, right, right. and being mindful of your calorie intake. Yeah, totally. They'll definitely make a difference. Next question is from Jay Emke. I recently found out that my testosterone levels are incredibly low. I am meeting with an endocrinologist soon, but in the meantime, what are some natural ways to help me get my testosterone levels back to normal? Maybe the most popular question that I get in my DMs. Yeah. yeah. How to raise testosterone. Yeah. And probably just because it's become, worth addressing constantly. I mean, it, it keeps coming up. This has become an epidemic. Yeah, I mean, it is. It's it, ironic. It right? wasn't until <laughs> it wasn't until I shared on the show did I realize uh, how many other people mm. have, have suffered with. I mean, it's it's and what I'm more blown away by <clears throat> is the age category. Like, of course, you know, I yeah. being a trainer for as long as we've been, I'm used to, you know, men in their, you know, mid to late fifties, you know, talking to me about this and us trying mm -hmm. to address diet and sleep and stress and things like that to help, uh, you know, increase these natural levels. But where I'm, I'm blown away by how many 20 year olds and early thirties that I'm, I'm getting messages from about this. And, uh, it's. I, I, it's crazy that we don't you don't hear more more conversations around this like mm -hmm. it, that it's and I feel like it's one of those things that like ten years down the road we're going to hear a lot. It's an epidemic. It, t testosterone levels have been declining for decades. It's getting to get a little scary now. Sperm counts are also dropping, and have been dropping for a long time to the point where we may be dealing with a massive fertility problem from the men's side mm. uh, in the next 20 or 30 years because of these. We still haven't reached the levels where lots of men are considered infertile, yeah. but the drop in like sperm count is significant. Well, big pharma is paying attention. I've yeah. seen nothing but like uh, products coming out to right. try and address this and like from younger age demographics and like making it easier and more discreet, you know, so you're, you know, you're taking these pills and things to address, you know, blue chew yeah, and Viagra ED and all these things. No, well, the, no. the, the problem is not what I'm more concerned with isn't the low testosterone because the, the way they're going to, yeah, because yeah. the way they're going to fix that is they'll give people testosterone sure. and that does handle 
the symptoms, sure, but low sperm count because then you're going to have to do everyone's going to have to do IVF or whatever mm. if sperm counts. Get well, too low. and and uh, but to Justin's point, I agree that part of the the thing that's kind of scary too is that we're just we're not addressing the root cause. We're just like, oh, my sex drive is down. Yep. That's what people. So let's just take this pill instead of like digging deeper into. Why? Why? And do you have? Yeah. You know, low low. Yeah, what does the environment look like? And I think a, a lot. Of, I mean, I think there's, I think there's a lot of factors that are, that are at play. But probably the most is just the amount of stress that the average human is dealing with today. And when we think stress all the time, people just think like, oh, I'm not very stressed out. I don't have a I don't have a stressful job or school's not that stressful for me. But we forget that like everything is a stressor, right? Like all the, and if you're constantly- Constant lack of sleep. Yeah, yes, exactly. So if you're- of sun if exposure. You're not sleeping good, exactly. You're not getting enough sun. You're staring at a computer screen till midnight at night. Like all these things I think are compounding. And I think that you're starting to see this in young people because of that. Yeah, well, testosterone is an interesting hormone because it's, it's, a, uh, it's a pretty reactionary hormone. Like- a man's testosterone levels will rise if he wins an athletic event. It'll drop uh, if he loses an athletic event. If he watches an athletic event and his team loses, they'll notice a drop in testosterone. Hmm. If he if that he didn't happen to me, walks okay. into a room with an, with an attractive woman, if he gives a speech, if he, you know, there's lots of things affect testosterone. So one of the ways you can raise your testosterone is to live in a way that would reflect higher testosterone. What does that look like? Lift heavy weights. That's number one. Uh, inactivity is probably one of the largest uh, contributors to lowering testosterone levels in men. We just aren't generally as strong as we used to be because for a long time, our jobs included lots of physical manual labor. So you didn't need to go to the gym. You were lifting heavy shit, moving heavy shit, and breaking things for work. And men were just physical we're not physical anymore that's number one Th that's mm, definitely that's like super number one in that's, my for someone who's gone through this and i mean i was taking all the natural supplements i was infrared i was paying attention to sleep i mean i've done everything under the sun of and they all contributed and all helped out a little bit but not a single not a single thing did i feel the difference as much as i felt when i strength trained and that's hard and what's really tough and i understand when you're a, when you are a man in this position, when you have low testosterone, it's very hard to get the gumption to want to go to the gym and go lift heavy ass mm -hmm. weight. Yeah, it's humbling. But I remember when I did that, I would and I would feel the surge over the next twenty four to forty eight hours. It wasn't just like a, it, like you you talk about excitement from a game, yeah, right? Yeah, that, yeah. That's a, like a a fleeting feel sure. or, or like levels, right? You get a spike initially because it happens, and then it probably levels and then drops mm -hmm. back down again, and it probably relatively a quick amount of time. When I would do a, a heavy squat or deadlift session uh, when I was going through the really, really low levels, I would notice an uh, elevation right after lifting, and then I would notice it for like the next 24 to 48 hours consistently before I started to feel it kind of come back down again. And there was nothing else that I did that I could really feel. I, there's things that I was doing that I was like, oh, yeah, the, maybe because I was getting better sleep and the infrared and I was mm -hmm. doing all these things like, okay, I'm, and then the herbs that you had me taking, like all those things were like, okay, this is making me feel a little bit better, but nothing compares to the, no, the strength that's, training. No, it's number one. I mean, they do these tests where they'll have men, uh, they'll do these grip tests on men. And the average, I think, 20-year-old male today has got the hand strength of the average 60-year-old in 1980 or something like that. Like, <laughs> We have gotten our really grandpas would kick our ass. really soft and really weak, and it's because we just don't do anything physical. I see it with my kids. I see it with my son and his friends, and and all the kids that he that they, they you know goes to his school or whatever. I mean, mostly what they do involves being inactive. So we're just that right there will cause a, a drop in testosterone. That's proven by the way. So number one, lift weights. But here's a little caveat to that. Do it the right way. So mm -hmm. if you're entering into a resistance training program with low testosterone, yeah. don't go balls out with your workout. You need to lift maybe two days a week, maybe three days a yeah, week, full body, covered. one exercise per body part, heavy, don't go to failure, long rest in between sets. That's the way you should be lifting weights right now. So that's number one. Number two, we talked about stress. It's not necessarily that we have too much stress. It's that we have the wrong kind, the wrong mix of stress. So our body's getting a lot of this kind of low to moderate level of constant stress, but we're not getting the weight training type of stress. We're not getting the, you know, the the the, the safety types of stress, which actually raises testosterone in men. So, like if you put a bunch of men in an environment where it's a little dangerous, we need to protect our families or whatever. Men's testosterone levels actually start to react 
and start to, to, to climb. There's some evidence to show that. So um, the stresses are a little bit different. So one thing you can do is get better sleep. Mm -hmm. Better sleep or good sleep can, it really helps your body deal with a, the wrong mix, I would say, of, of, of stress. And what right, now, we, right now we have a combination of no activity, definitely no lifting weights, and shitty sleep. Shitty sleep because we're distracted up until the, the, the second we go to bed. And then we wake up and we take caffeine and all that stuff to keep us yeah. up. So those are watching things. better I, shows like Airwolf yeah. and AT. Stupid. <laughs> I, I also notice a big difference too, just where your body fat percentage is. Yeah. Um, when I just right away, as soon as I get down to like that twelve or lower body fat percentage, I can feel a difference instantly. So they, I know studies show that anything over fifteen percent, you'll see a, for men, you see a decrease. Yeah, in high 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 body fat can cause low testosterone, and too low body fat can also cause. Right, you um, want to be in that kind of sweet spot. You want to be lean, but you don't want to be shredded. Right. Uh, for testosterone. And then the third thing is diet. Um, now, what kind of diet raises testosterone? Well, number one, you have to have adequate nutrients. Nutrients like zinc and vitamin D have been shown to be important for testosterone production. Um, but you don't want to be too low in anything. So what I mean by that is you don't want to do a no carb diet or a low fat diet. Both of those may actually lower good balance testosterone. You want to kind of have them all, right? Yeah. You want to have some good comp complex carbohydrates. You want to have a high protein that's important for muscle building and the testosterone too. Fat, don't shy away from fat too much. Of course, you don't want to overeat, but fat is very important in, in hormone production. So that's something you don't want to. I like uh, dietary cholesterol. Mm -hmm. That's great for testosterone uh, for some men. If you're one of the men that doesn't respond negatively to it, I would say doing that. And then as far as herbs and supplements, these, by the way, will help you a little bit, but they're not going to compare to what we just talked about with diet, right. sleep, and exercise. Oh, and sunlight. That's the other one. Um, but here's some supplements you can try. You can try... Tribulus uh, might raise testosterone a low with, with men who have low testosterone. Tong Cat Ali. Uh, yeah, uh, Tong Cat Ali. Um, ashwagandha has been shown to raise testosterone in men with lower testosterone. But the results are not necessarily like, oh, you're just going to take ashwagandha forever and my testosterone is normal. Mm. You might notice a spike, but then after six months That's or so. That's what I know. I notice it like I get a little bit of a bump and then it would kind of like stop. Your body starts to adapt. Yeah, horny it, goat weeds. That just horny goat weed is, uh, yeah, is another one. So. You know, along the lines of nutrition too, avoid alcohol. Oh yeah, avoid alcohol and you know. and oh marijuana, Can oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, too much oh, cannabis right. can have an estrogenic effect uh, on the body for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, and, and just alcohol because of what it does to your sleep too. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that, I think the sleep on alcohol is horrific, oh, and when sleep is one of the major major things that can help increase it by getting good good rest every single night. Uh, and if you're a, a young guy who is you know, got school or work all week long, and then you then you cut loose on those. So you got stress from low levels of stress all week long from work or school, and then you cut loose Friday, Saturday night, drinking like crazy, fucks your sleep up again. Like, yeah, you're just stuck in this this rut. So the, all those things I think are most important. But I agree, Sal. Like, uh, of all the things that are out there, supplement wise and things, the 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 sleep and the and the strength training heavy, and then getting a good balanced diet, making sure you're feeding the body well. Uh, nothing made a bigger yeah. difference. Well, you, you mentioned alcohol. If you're if you're uh, drinking and your liver isn't just its ap uh, its optimal health, it will have trouble uh, eliminating or removing certain circulating hormones. So you can notice estrogens issues with a with a fatty liver or a, a liver that's not super healthy. So alcohol, I would say, stay away from completely if you have low testosterone. Next question is from Zebo fifty seven. Do tight muscles and or a lack of mobility impede gains? Totally. It can. Yeah. I, I, I tell you what, there's two, two ways. Here's the first one that's easy. This is an easy way to understand. If your lack of mobility or your tightness is preventing you from doing the best exercises, for sure, yeah, that's going to prevent gains. Or even full range of motion. That's the yeah. other one. That's yeah. the other one right there. Yeah, if, you can't, if you're not able to go – I mean – uh, again, this is personal from personal story for me, but like, uh, my, my legs, when I got to the place where I could squat all the way down, I don't have to do nowhere near the load to get the size on my legs because I'm taking the legs through its fullest range of motion now in comparison to where it was just three years ago. So yeah. And which is, it's kind of, to me, when you think about it, it's pretty obvious, right? Yeah. You know, would be, would using half the muscle give you the most amount of gains or using all of your muscle, like the forward, which I know, and I know somebody hears that and goes like, you use all of your muscle, even when you go yeah, yeah, short, yeah. right? Yeah. So I know there's some fucking idiot out there right now that just heard that. And he was just like, oh, you use all your muscle yeah. no matter what. No, wait, well, wait. I just, I remember working with one of the models for like doing our maps programs and stuff and like not being able to get, you know, their, their elbow in a certain position and then get it to lock out completely like a, you know, and not, and not fully developing their triceps. 
It, like their triceps were su- substantially, you know, smaller in comparison than the biceps. And it's just like one of those frustration things for them. Whereas like if they just worked on the mobility of it and regained that, you know, strength and range of motion, like that would have unlocked all new like levels for them. Yeah. Totally. I mean, okay. So, so they have been studied. So first off, bodybuilders have been saying this for years, for decades, that full range of motion, full reps are better for muscle growth. Personal trainers have observed this also for for forever. I observed this over two decades of training clients. If I could get my clients to do a full curl versus a half curl or mm-hmm. a full press versus a half press or a full row versus a half row, they just got better, better results. They got better results overall, better muscle development, and then indirectly better fat loss because they were able to build uh, more muscle. So that's number one. But number two, the studies actually support this. When studies compare full range of motion to partial range of motion in terms of muscle gains, all the studies, uh, they slant towards the fact that full range of motion is superior. So if you're so tight or you're tight and your lack of mobility prevents you from really utilizing what you can do with your full range of motion, what's possible with the full range of motion, you're not getting the best uh, gains through your workouts. This is why I always make the case for mobility training for bodybuilders or for people who are just don't even care about mobility. It's like that's fine if you don't if you don't want to have better mobility, that's okay. But work on your mobility because it's going to make all your other exercises way 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 and it's going to give them longevity too yeah and and not to mention right now maybe when you're young like tight muscles are just tight muscles for you but as you get older tight muscles turns into chronic pain Mm -hmm. exactly you know tight being tight and wound up at 40 50 plus ends up being elbow pain shoulder pain hip pain knee pain so you may get away with being tight in your 20s and maybe early 30s but as you start to age if you don't address all those overactive or tight muscles, uh, you soon will be told by your body yeah. that you need to. So here, even if it's not just about gains as far as building muscle, you know, eventually the chronic pain follows here, that. Here's some anecdote. Uh, prob- this was probably in my late teens. I remember I started working out when I was 14. One of my body part, one of my focuses was my shoulders. I, I have a narrow bone structure, and I wanted big round shoulders to offset that a little bit. And so I did some a lot of the exercises that I read in like Arnold Schwarzenegger's bodybuilding uh, uh, encyclopedia of bodybuilding and all this other stuff. But I remember at the time the bodybuilding magazines uh, of the time were showing a lot of behind the neck presses. It was really popular back then. All the bodybuilders were doing behind the neck presses. I didn't have the shoulder stability or mobility to do it, so I just avoided doing them. And especially when I got certified as a trainer, I remember the first certification I took. They yeah. said, it's a bad exercise. Right. Well, any, at some point, I don't know what convinced me, but I said, you know what? I'm going to get good at behind-the-neck presses. Forget what the certification says. I see people doing them. They seem to be fine. So I, I started practicing them. I started working on getting better at doing them. And as, at some point, my mobility got good enough to where I could make it a part of my routine. And guess what happened? My shoulders got bigger. Yeah, I got, yeah, I got better gains because I'm now doing an exercise I couldn't do before, but I had to work on the mobility first. Right. Next question is from Sarah Shapes Up. What are your best mindset tips and tricks to sticking with a diet plan when cravings are hitting? Oh, those cravings. Okay, so I'm glad that she used the word mindset, okay, because it is a mindset. Now, I I don't like the tips and tricks part because at some point you have to change. Are you really going to trick yourself like all the time? No. No, You know when we trick ourselves to do the shit, the the opposite, like to trick ourselves. Exactly, yeah. Um, It it is a mindset. You have to shift your mindset. Here's something that might help you, okay? Realize that a craving means something different than a want, okay? So I'm craving that that cupcake. Doesn't necessarily mean I, I want to eat that cupcake. It just means that I'm acknowledging that it'll taste good and it's going to be pleasurable to eat. But when I weigh it in with everything else, the fact that that cupcake isn't really going to be good for me, I'm trying to get a little bit leaner or I'm trying to get healthier or that cupcake is going to bother my digestion, it's going to give me heartburn um, or I'm just not going to feel good. When you add all that up, then I can look at the cupcake and say, wow, I'm craving the taste of that cupcake, but I really don't want it. I don't want that cupcake. It's a totally different mindset, but it makes it a lot easier. It's a lot easier when you are when you get offered food or when there's food in front of you, rather than saying, I can't eat that, saying, I don't want to eat that, but also acknowledging, because it's, there's, there's a duality here, you have to acknowledge that you would enjoy the taste and the flavor of of eating that food because I think sometimes when people say, they, they say to me, I can't say I don't want it because I do. I'd be li- lying. I say, no, 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 it's not the same. 
you acknowledge that you'd enjoy. Look, it's like being it's like being in a in a committed relationship, and you meet an attractive person, and you think to yourself like, wow, that person's really sexy. Yeah. Does that mean you you want to sleep with him? No, it means you acknowledge that it'll probably be. Oh yeah, I'm sure I'd enjoy that, but I don't want to because I'm committed, and that's not something that I really want to do. It's the same thing. That's the mindset that you need to go into with your nutrition, is that you're making those kinds of decisions because. If it becomes a, I can't, I'm craving it, but I need to uh, restrict myself. Oh, you're going to be, in, you're, you'll lose at some point. I don't mind. I don't mind tips and tricks. Uh, but I do agree that the, the number one thing is awareness. Uh, you have to, you have to become aware. And that's all you're talking about right now is, is, is aware of what's, what's really going on. And, you know, what, why do I want this or feel like I want this? And, and that 100% uh, is for sure. But that doesn't mean that I, I don't think there's things that I've done uh, that would fall in the category of of tips or tricks to to help me stick to routine. One of them, an example, and this is where I'm like things like weighing and measuring food and portioning it out, uh, because just behaviorally, I know myself, I know clients, and when you sit at a table and things are in a giant bowl with a big sp- you know spoon in there to spoon it out onto your plate. Uh, you know, most people grossly underestimate. They, oh, that looks like about six ounces, or oh, that looks like about my cup of rice I should be having. Yeah, you ever see someone weigh out like a tablespoon of peanut butter? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That's exactly. not a tablespoon, problem. right? That's like four <laughs> tablespoons of peanut. That's a great. That's a great example. So, this is where I think you know portioning your food out. This is I. I, I had a ton of success competing when this stuff really mattered. When I had to be like precise. And I, and I had to stick to a diet. If I didn't stick to a diet, then I would lose, right? So, you know, one of the number one things to make sure I had success was portioning out my food. I have a, a prep day on Sundays. I would make most all the meals that I'd be consuming for the week. It would be already weighed and measured. It would be in Tupperware. So all I had to do was heat it up and eat it. And when I was done, I was done. It wasn't like, oh, I think I'm still hungry a little bit, or oh, let me have this else, or or in between meals going like, oh, I feel like a snack. Like there was no such thing as snacks, just incomplete meals. It was, I got a meal, and then when I'm hungry, I eat the next meal that I've prepared mm-hmm. for myself. When I eat all the meals, I'm out of meals. I'm done. So, you know, that to me is a is a great tip or trick for people that are trying to stick to a diet and they want to be consistent with it. Another thing that I find. Uh, like, and this is going back to like the mindset, uh, like Sal was talking about, I don't like saying you can't have things. Uh, but if I was going to go have something that I know, like, you know, chips or nuts or, you know, some sort of a sweet treat that I know that I could easily just keep digging my hand into it. I'm very aware of, uh, if I'm doing it in front of a television and I used to have those little, uh, and they're like the little, you know, couple ounce, maybe two, three ounce Ziploc bags are real small. Oh, yeah, yeah, ones. And I would go, when I would get a, you know, handful, instead of just getting, grabbing in, in the box or grabbing in the jar and eating out of the jar while you're watching, I would go portion out, you know, the, the treat or the thing that I wanted to have and control it in the Ziploc bag. And then I would, if I'm going to go walk and do that in front of the television or have it later on, I know that. Once I eat that one ounce of nuts or whatever it is that I, I've put in there, I'm done. It's because it's in this little Ziploc bag. So these are things that I, I think that have really helped me. I also like if you know if I have a client, I always ask like what types of things do they do they crave or they they gravitate towards when they when they overeat. Like what are you a sweet eater? Are you a salt person? And so figuring those things out. And there's, I mean, God, with Instagram and Pinterest and, and the internet now, there's it's so easy to find. Uh, healthy alternatives. Um, Sal, I know you've made this. I used to do this all the time. I watch. I, mean, I think you posted it on your Instagram not that long ago. But you know, I used to make this rice cake with a, a Greek yogurt over it, sliced up strawberries, mm-hmm. and you know, you could even do like a, ha- a tablespoon of Nutella or something on there and make this like strawberry short, and it tastes amazing. So when I have a sweet craving, you know, I would eat alternatives like that. And that's extremely lower in calorie in comparison to what you're going to get that's processed. You, you know what I'm thinking about uh, as I'm thinking about this question? It's, uh, it reminds me, I, sometime, every once in a while I would get a client that would get would be so uncomfortable with the pain of working out. Like we'd be doing reps and they just, because they'd never exercised before. Do you guys ever get clients like this? Mm-hmm. They, yeah. They'd never exercised yeah, they before. Think it, they think it got hurt. It's like, oh my just, God, I can't uh, anymore. Oh, you know. Uh, and, and But over time, as you train this person for months and months, 
they start to get used to and then comfortable with the uncomfortable feeling of working right. out. Like I've been working out forever. I am very comfortable with the feeling of doing reps till they burn and till the pump and you know that 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 feeling to me is it's still uncomfortable, but my mindset around it has completely changed to where I'm comfortable with it. And what's funny about this question is when you think about this, like yeah, it's the same with hunger. Yeah, we're so uncomfortable. We're, I mean, we're so fearful of uncomfortable feelings and. Being hungry or having a craving can be uncomfortable, but I think if you sit with it for a little bit, sit with it for a little while, let yourself feel it. Don't deny it. Don't no, no. ignore it. Don't well, try to distract what, it. This is what we talk about. Suppress it. This is where we talk about the benefits of fasting. Yeah. That's yeah. this is one of the the number one things that I think, and this is why I I definitely integrate it into everybody's diet routine or program mm-hmm. at one point. You just have to be careful, right? You don't want to do it for lo- weight loss, right? Yeah. You, exactly, that, and that right. I use it as a teaching tool. Like, hey, we're going to fast for twenty four hours, and it's not. Let's see if we can get shredded doing this. It's getting comfortable with that exact feeling that you're talking about. But yeah, I, I, you know, there's to me, it's okay to have these these little hacks that that help you uh, uh, along the way. I mean, I oh, think drinking seltzer water that's a good one. That's yeah, that's, yeah like yeah, I was just going to mention water. I mean, in general, like that, like nothing like fancy in terms of a hack, but that's something that I, especially at late night craving stuff, like when you're watching TV, like that will always pop up and that will be a mm-hmm. thing until, you know, you really can, can sit through it and recognize it. And so I do that. I'll drink water, have something for my mouth to do, or like, it'll help to kind of like suppress a little bit of the hunger, but you know, after a while, it just becomes like less and less. I, I used to make a rule for myself also like that eat what I my body needs first. And then if I still want this thing, whatever it is that I'm craving, then I would allow myself a portion of whatever that is. And you'd be surprised how many times when we get these cravings, it's because we've just gone a long time without food or that's mm. that feeling setting in that your body's like, hey, we need some fuel. And because you maybe stretched it too long, mm. all of a sudden it's like, you know how that feeling is, right? When you eat consistently every few hours, it's a lot easier to stick to eating something that's balanced and maybe not the most, you know, rich in calories. When you've gone for a long period of time, sometimes all of a sudden you go from, oh yeah, I want some chicken and rice and broccoli to, oh, I'll eat anything. I'm so hungry, and whatever you can get your hands on. Because so, your willpower, it's like it's waning. Exactly. It's been, it's been, you've been holding it for so long. So a lot of times, if I if I play this mental game of, okay, Adam, if you still are craving this thing after you eat the meal that you need, because you're still behind, I haven't hit my protein intake yet, I haven't hit my, my fat, my carbon tank for the day, go eat it and then ask yourself, do you still have that craving? A lot of times that craving subsides after you fuel your body with what it needs. Right, well, here's another tip. Go to bed on time. Yeah. This is a big one. I was going to say go to bed early. Yeah, even. go to or bed. shut on- the kitchen down. Yeah, I, like, yeah. I used to just go to bed, dude. Stay, like staying tired. up late is a great recipe for disaster Yeah, when it comes to diet because we tend to want to eat late at night after we've had breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But I, you know, at the end of the day, I really think it's like we got to learn to be comfortable with uncomfortable feelings and you don't need to react with every impulse just because you feel uncomfortable. I got to put something in my mouth. Like sit with that feeling, get used to it a little bit, make friends with it. Don't avoid it. Don't distract yourself. Um, because at the end of the day, long-term success, I mean, short-term success trip, you know, tricks and tips can help long-term success. Got to change your mindset. There's no way yeah, around I it. I agree with you. You can't. Yeah. You have to have a different mindset. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides, books, and resources. They're all totally free. You can also find the three of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at mindpumpjustin. You can find Adam at mindpumpadam. And you can find me at mindpumpsal.